Hello, welcome back. My name is Chris, and today we're going to be talking about pull requests. Um, so we're jumping ahead a little bit, uh, but I figured it's Friday. Why not add some value today instead of talking in, in detail what Emerge is or, you know, what Fetch is doing or what Pull is doing. Spoiler alert, it's a combination of both Fetch and Emerge. Crazy. Uh, we're just going to go right into a PR. So how do we do a PR? Why do we want to do a PR? Uh, and then I'll just walk you through an example. So... Uh, I've created again a companion repository here at uh, my GitHub that you can check out if you're interested. Um, and essentially, just going to walk you through how to do the PR. It's not going to go into too much depth, right? We just need to know how to do it. We're not worried too much today on the mechanisms behind what is a, a PR. Um, however, we're going to talk about like why you would do this, right? And a big reason we do this is for contributing to a repository. Um, pull requests are the best way to contribute, um, to a repository, whether it be open source, whether it be at work, you're going to hear the term PR thrown around a lot. If you start working in uh, an industry that involves any kind of software development, and that's because PRs are an amazing tool that give us access to a whole suite of, uh, of, of, of cool things we can do. Like we can, uh, you know, have automate automated workflows based off of, uh, PRs. We can have people check our work before we submit it. We can. There's a, there's a whole slew of awesome things that come with this idea of a PR, and it's kind of like a we're getting set up to do something. You know what I mean? It is a it's awesome. So uh, we're gonna talk about how to do a PR now. So I already have done one step of this, which is that I've cloned this or I've uh, forked this repository. From, uh, onto my GitHub account that's set up with the SSH that we did. Uh, so the SSH tutorial that we did earlier. And uh, I'm just going to show you how to do the PR. So first things first, in order to do a PR, we've got to set some stuff up, right? So we can't just make a pull request with no changes. Um, so what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go to our terminal and we're going to want to clone that repository. So we're going to hit up the old git clone. And I'm actually going to uh, put this in a folder called ggpr, uh, just so you can see my terminal a bit better. So uh, we'll do that, and then we'll cd into ggpr. And as you can see, uh, when we do the git status here, we're on branch main. We're up to date with our remote origin main. Uh, if we do our ls, we'll see our readme. And if we check our git log, we'll see all the commits that came with this repository. Perfect. Okay, that's what we like to see. So first things first, we don't want to make changes on main. I mean, I mean to say never is wrong, and there is development workflows that work right on main all the time. Uh, usually, you're still going to be concerned with, uh, uh, with how you're doing changes and the workflow surrounding that. But for, for the most part, we're going to be doing what's called uh, some branch development. So we're going to develop on a branch that we create and then merge it into main. We're gonna talk about merge in detail uh, coming down the road here, but for right now, just keep in mind that basically whenever we're adding features or we're doing something or making changes to a repository, especially if it's like an open source project, um, though they might have specific guidelines on how they want you to develop on their open source project. So you should always, those should always be the, the rules you follow, but generally, we're going to create a new branch whenever we're going to do some work. So let's do that now. We already know the command with git switch dash C. And we're just going to make a feature branch called add name. Uh, you'll notice that I often use this convention of indicating in some way what this branch is meant for. Um, it's just a habit. Uh, you know, it, how you name branches or, or conventions surrounding that entirely depends on what project you're working on but usually some kind of significant or signifier as to what 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 is this branch doing? Like, why is this branch here? Uh, is usually welcome. Um, so with the git switch dash C command, you can see that we have already switched to the new branch and we can verify that with the git uh, branch command. And there you go. We have created this branch and we have swapped to it. Everything is great. Now we're gonna go ahead and hop into nano. And just like last week, we're just going to add our name and, uh, you know, we're going to put names here 
I'm going to add a Chris and the old ta-da. And then I will write out with control O, enter to save it with the same file name, control X to close nano. Uh, now when we look at our git status, we will see that there's a modified file that is not staged. So let's go ahead and stage that with git add dot or git add readme.md. We can use git add dot, but I stay in the habit uh, while you're learning of being specific. So overly specific at the beginning is probably going to be for the best. Um, just because if you, can do the, if you can do it the overly specific way, uh, you don't have to worry about being able to do it the generic way. So next thing we got to do, of course, is now that that uh, change is staged, we want to go ahead and commit it. And we can do that using our good old fashioned git commit dash m added my name. Uh, absolutely. What a great commit message. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and check our git log. And we can see that we are indeed, we have moved off of main. We're on to the feature branch add name where this commit exists. And main does not know about this commit. All right, perfect. So what do we want to do now? Well, we want these changes to appear on github.com, right? So we've made the change and now we need to push it to github.com. We just learned how to do that in the last video. So let's go ahead and do that same thing. We're going to git push set upstream origin, origin spelt right. And we're gonna call this FB add uh, name. Easy enough, right? And again, this command when broken apart is saying we're going to git push our, and I'll just do this so it's a little bit easier to see. Whoop. But we're going to uh, push this branch. We're going to set an upstream of origin FB add name. Now, GitHub's clever enough to know that what we want to do is add a new branch to the remote and the pusher changes there, as well as track the the uh, that new added branch on the remote. So when we run this command, we get everything we we'd ever want in the world, which is this, uh, you know, everything everything did what we wanted, and it has this create a pull request for FB add name on GitHub by visiting, and it gives us a link. So let's just go ahead and click that link. Uh, I used control plus left mouse click in order to do that. If you just left mouse click, uh, you might notice it's not working. And of course you can always copy and paste, but uh, in, the, in the terminal control left mouse click is the way to get there. And you can also see that we added that new branch and set up to track the new branch we created on that remote. If we look at our Git uh, log, you can see now that we are also tracking that remote. Sounds great. Okay. With that out of the way, we're already on this screen. We're already ready to start doing the PR, right? Uh, but let's talk about what happens if we didn't click that link. Uh, if we go to our repository, you'll notice this uh, interesting, uh, you know, banner that pops up that says compare and pull request for branch add name. Click the big green compare and pull request button. So we'll go ahead and do that now. Now, one thing you're gonna wanna keep in mind, and this is very important, you'll notice that in this piece of text, and I'll just go ahead and I'll uh, I'll zoom in quite a bit here. But for these windows, which is our, our branches, right? We have this kind of, okay, so we're at CSAL, that's the terminal SSH um, you know, account. Get good pull request, compare, FB add name. Okay, so all that's really saying is that we're, that's the branch we're comparing to the base. So we're on this repository, the branch of this repository, right? So this FB add name branch on in this repository is going to be merged into, and then you'll notice here, that's being merged into the, original repository, not ours, right? So you'll see like, this is the Chris-Alexiak uh, version, not the C-S-S-Ale uh, 
you know, repository. So that's important to keep in mind. By default, Git, GitHub is going to assume that what you want to do is contribute to the original project. And in this case, we do. So we're going to keep it that way. However, you might not always want to do that. So it's, it's always important to pay special mind to this particular menu because it's going to help you be sure you're doing what you want. And a large part of managing Git errors and problems with the Git tool and GitHub is simply not making the mistake in the first place. And the easiest way to do that is pay special attention to everything you're doing and making sure that what you want to do is what the screen, whatever screen it happens to be you're looking at, is saying what you want to do. So in this case, yes, we want to take our changes that we made on our version of this repository and apply those changes to the repository we're trying to contribute to. So it works out perfectly. Uh, we have control over all of these menus, but for now, GitHub's got what we want on lockdown, so that's it. Uh, we have this added my name, and I added my name uh, uh, to the readme.md as instructed. Perfect. Works good for me. I'm going to go ahead and just click the green create pull request button. Okay, and now we're done. That's it. That's the whole pull request, right? Uh, so not really, but but yes, kind of, right? Uh, we, we've basically done everything we need to. Uh, so let's just look at this screen. First of all, we have this pull request tab on github.com. Second of all, it, it shows us the open status. Uh, it shows that we want to merge one commit into the main branch of this repository from our uh, FB add name branch, which is correct. That is absolutely what's happening. It shows us some information about how many lines we're adding versus removing. Uh, we can view everything from a conversation, which is a discussion board style uh, conversation. So if you wanted to ask questions uh, or if someone was reviewing your work and they had questions, we could go ahead and deal with all of that through this discussion board or conversation tab. We can see what commits we have. So this is important for larger projects where you have potentially many commits. What each of them does might be important, or you might have separate information in each commit to make it more organized for whoever's reviewing your code to uh, look at. Next, we have checks. So this could be where we have automatic, that, that automation I was talking about, right? So we, we, we can have all kinds of crazy automation uh, with, the, with github.com actions. Uh, which we're going to get to way in the future. But for now, just know that it's possible to be done. And then we just have our diffs. So diff basically is just a way of saying difference, right? Uh, and it shows what the differences between the files are. So in this case, the difference is I've added some spaces as well as this uh, heading for names here and my name plus the tada emoji. Now, Let's go back to the conversation tab. There's a couple really important and powerful features here. Number one, GitHub's gonna automatically check to see if we can merge these changes. That's huge, right? That tells us right away that there's no conflicts, that this could be merged, no problems. It doesn't mean that like the code's perfect and it's definitely going to work, to be, to be fair, but it does mean GitHub can merge this and nothing's gonna break. No, I mean, nothing, in in the repository is going to break uh you know if if you write write bad code it's still going to be bad but uh you know it tells you a little bit more about the fact that the change you're making is fine for github get the git tool that powers github can make this no props so that's important to know number two i mean it's got the full gamut of you know markdown emoji whatever it is you can do it all uh, secondly, it's got this side panel and this side panel is huge. Number one, we can add reviewers to our pull request. So say you're working in a company and, uh, you do a pull request and you know, uh, your, your boss told you to work with a, with a senior developer and that they can review your code when you're done before you merge it. You can add them in this reviewers column over here. You know, who's assigned to this particular pull request? You can do this here. If your company has specific labels that they use or tags, or if this is part of certain projects or part of milestones, you can absolutely 
kind of set everything up here and you can really add some organization to the rest of your workflow. Now this is to, this is specific to the GitHub tool. So this is outside of just Git, uh, but it is a very powerful series of features. Uh, I, I'd strongly recommend if you're working at a company, you're not taking advantage of these things to try and set them up. Uh, or you don't have to because they're not, you know, it's not the end of the world if you don't, but they're very, they're very cool features. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I, I definitely pay mind to them like everything else in the GitHub ecosystem. Okay. That's enough. That's enough about that for now. We're that's it. That's what we do. We've created the pull request for real. Um, and that is how easy it is, right? You saw it was just clicking a couple buttons and that can go back to, uh, you know, the original, uh, maintainer of the repository. Now we'll get that pull request. They can see it and look at it. Uh, you know, they can go ahead and get more information requiring approval. We could add that rule. Uh, you know, setting up CI, we can we can do that as well. Uh, but we're we're not going to talk about the PR from this side of things right now. We're just going to talk about how do we actually submit a PR, right? How do we how do we how do we do that? Uh, and so that is that. Okay, thank you so very much for your time. I hope you appreciated. Uh, learning a little bit about how to do a PR. It's not very complicated as it turns out. Uh, next time on Dragon Ball Z, we're going to talk about what to do uh, with a PR. How do we merge it? And we're going to talk a little bit more about merging before we do that. Okay. So thank you very much for your time. Hope you have a wonderful night. And uh, we'll see you next time.